MDMA is fucking crazy. This song going shits. Really, truly just a dollar store Playboy Cardi. He is. On the west side of Atlanta, Georgia, would be the birth of one of rap's upcoming legends, Kenyatta Lee Frazier, better known as Ken Carson. Unlike his peers, Ken would not live a normal life. Growing up, he would always be around top artists like Travis Scott, Young Thug, and Playboy Cardi, even being close with top producers within the music scene. To him, even signing to Playboy Cardi's label, Opium, Ken's success would have only started when he was only 15. The only question is, how was he really able to have so many connections while being so young? But to answer this, we're going to have to look back at the very beginning at Ken Carson's life. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. April 11, 2000 it was the day Ken was born. Growing up, Ken will be interested in the X-Men comics in which we can see in his merch, reading manga, and more importantly, music, with him listening to artists like Lil Wayne and Future. He would have a troubled past with him, always getting into trouble in school. In fact, he would even go as far to fight his own teachers. Oh, I slapped my teacher when I was 10. <laughs> I slapped my teacher when I was 10. Ken would later move to the south side of Atlanta where he met Little 88, which allowed him to create the connections we see today. Little 88 is the cousin of popular producer TM88 in whom Ken would quickly meet due to a FaceTime call where he found out they were cousins. Insane to even think this call started his entire career. This caused Ken to quickly start to get to know the producer group 808 Mafia by meeting another producer named Southside. Just knowing these producers caused him to be a part of studio sessions with Travis Scott, Young Thug, and even Cardi, which he would later grow a bond with by being surrounded by a lot of producers and rappers. Ken decided to start creating music at the age of 14, in which, at the time, he was only having fun making songs. A year later, when he was 15, Ken would drop out of school due to him enrolling into military school. He would have to stay in military school for 6 months, but only would stay the 3 because of him being on his phone. Ken would later learn his lesson about his phone usage later in his life. Since Ken was still hooked on the idea of making music, he never was truly interested in school. He decided to get his GED so he could finish school at the age of 15. Ken knew that he had the potential to be big someday because of the amount of connections he had in his life. This caused him to pursue his dream career in fashion? In which he began posing his fits on his page at Barbie Boy Ken Carson. A year after receiving his GED, Ken would go to LA for a concert where he would see Cardi perform. He would get kicked out of the concert though because of him fighting one of his fans. Luckily, Cardi saw him and asked him, what the fuck is he doing here? In which Ken explained to Cardi what the situation was and actually Cardi was pretty cool and gave Ken Carson a wristband in order to get back into the concert. Which is super surreal because even back then Cardi was showing mad love to the young superstar. From this moment, their relationship started to grow. This exact scene caused Ken to be more motivated than ever in creating music. He would end up dropping his first ever single in 2016 titled 32, which would end up getting a whole ass blog post made by Rap Direct. This is insane to even think about due to him just beginning to release music. Sadly though, not much else happened within 2016 for Ken Carson. His SoundCloud page would end up getting deleted in 2017 due to this girl getting furious at him because he was talking to another girl who did become his girlfriend at the time, which caused this song to be fully deleted off the internet. Now, heading to 2018, Ken would drop two songs on SoundCloud under a new name, Ken Carson. Taking the name from the Barbie doll Ken, he believed that he was living a fire lifestyle, a lifestyle in which Ken wanted to take and be better in. The two songs Ken would end up taking part in were Fallback and Fold, both having production from 808 Mafia, which caused many to start looking at him. Fold being the one that caused him to have interviews with many blog posts and gain hella traction. Ken would slowly start to grow his relation with Cardi behind the scenes. Ken would start to notice what Cardi is overall best at, lying. In 2019, Ken Carson would first post his cover and track list for his upcoming EP, Boy Barbie. He would announce that the following EP, which had a feature from Young Jordan, would later release in March. Until when it became March and the EP was nowhere to be found on streaming services. This is where the lies for Ken Carson truly began. He would lie once again when he would later announce on his Insta account, Boy Barbie Ken Carson, that he would drop music in the first week of May, which one again would not end up dropping. Boy Barbie would not officially drop until May 12, 2020, with a different track list with two features from the UK artist Lancy Foe. Now, the reason for all the delays could have been due to his relation with Cardi. Playboy Cardi would announce his idea of starting his label back in January 14th, 2020, in an interview with Culture Kings. Yeah. So right now, what I'm trying to do is just expand, getting ready to like put my label together. That's what's up. He would tease the idea of his label Opium with Instagram posts and leaked songs, but in my opinion, this interview solidified his idea of expanding his career. Since Cardi was already beginning to develop his label Opium, he decided to have Ken Carson become the first person to be in this label because of their history together. 
This would also be the reason why Lance would have met Ken since he is cool with all of them. Although being released independently, Boy Barbie was truly the start of the young rapper's career. The production was not as good compared to his later projects, but you could really tell that the kid had a bright future ahead of him. Literally, Pink Panther was a banger, I'm not even gonna lie with y'all. Ken would quickly start teasing his next project, Teen X, on his Instagram story and lives. He would be creating this project during some of the studio sessions for Playboy Cardi's highly anticipated album, Whole Lotta Red. Although he wasn't really meant to do that, he just wanted to have fun. Teen X would be released on August 14th, 2020, with his breakout song Yale being on the EP. Ye would also get a music video being released on the same day. This song would blow up within the underground with it having over 61.6 million streams on Spotify during the time of this recording. Ken's popularity was slowly starting to increase due to this release. The production and flow also seemed to improve which would end up solidifying the Ken we know today. The whole idea of this album would be the start of what I like to call his X persona. X being short for ecstasy, the young prodigy wanted his album to represent young energy having fun overall, like being young and high. Ken would even decide to announce his next project, Teen X Relapse, a little over a week after dropping Teen X, which would act like a deluxe to his previous project. December 25th, 2020 would be the date Whole Lotta Red would end up releasing. The album would receive an insane amount of attention, good or bad. This album would end up boosting Ken Carson's career even further when he would have production credits on the song Beano alongside Out of Town and Little 88. According to an interview with Our Generation Music, Ken would help with the loop of the track since he has a good sense on how to do it. Whole Lotta Red would have a huge impact on what Cardi's label Opium would become. Ken did not let an opportunity go to waste either because the following month, Ken would start his insane year in 2021. Just two days into 2021, Teen X Relapse would release showing how much potential Ken had to the world. Having hit songs like Butterfly, High as Shit, and Teen X Baby with Butterfly and High as Shit both having music videos. In my opinion, this project felt more structured compared to its previous one. The production was more like a video game type of beat in which Ken performed amazing on. He also had a good grasp of which songs would be a hit as well. Overall, this project was just an improved version of Teen X. Later during that same month, Ken would also begin his, the release of his Lost Files projects. The Lost Files will only be SoundCloud exclusive so we can cater to those fans. These songs will always be throwaways while having some just being songs he didn't take too seriously. Think of it as an extra content before the release of an album. The idea of dropping these songs was genius for his careers too since this would be around the same time Whole Lotta Red would see a new light in the public's eye. So having more Cardi fans, seeing someone being associated with Cardi, dropping more tracks brought in new fans. Lost Files became an instant success by having most of the songs being over 200k streams. One song even having a little Yachty feature as well. A sequel to Lost Files would quickly come too because on July 10th, 2021, Ken would release Lost Files 2 ahead of his highly anticipated album, Project X. Around this time is also when he learned from Travis and Fago by removing the dollar sign within his name. Lost Files 2 would have a little Tekka feature on the song Patrick Ewing and one of his biggest songs, Team Bean. Team Bean would have a massive blow up with fans asking him to release a song on Spotify and Apple Music, in which he would end up doing so as well because almost a year later, on February 18th, 2022, he released it. Lost Files 2 did insane numbers on SoundCloud by having double the amount of streams on the first project. The hype for Ken Carson's debut project was at an all-time high, even though he lied hella about the release of it. July 23rd, 2021, Project X released. By having hits like Rock and Roll, Run Plus Ran, and Till I Die, his debut album was doing numbers. This would be the first album under his label, Opium. The whole theme of this album would be based off the drugged intense movie Project X. Within the movie, four teenagers have the craziest party of their lives. Actually, in anyone's lives. Because if any party gets as big as that, then a whole city could be destroyed. We see people within the party do hella drugs like weed, alcohol, and ecstasy. While being high and having the best time of their lives on the big screen caused Ken to be inspired to create this album. If you haven't already, before listening to Ken's album, I highly suggest you watch it because it really gives you a better understanding of this project. As he said in his Our Generation music video, Ken's rise to fame was not yet finished because his label owner Playboy Cardi announced his King Vamp Narcissist tour with his label mates Ken Carson and Destroy Lonely, with Rico Nasty the guest star. This tour would be a huge highlight for every artist involved, especially Ken. Being a part of his first tour, he had people going crazy in the mosh pits, which brought more attention to his album Project X. Not only that, the media attention towards the tour grew more and more each day. The Cardi fans really pulled through for Ken as well, since many were fucking with his vibe. The King Vamp Narcissist tour would go on for several months, which closed up the year towards the end of 2021. 
During January 2022, Ken would release what would be my favorite out of the Lost Files, Lost Files 3. Lost Files 3 would have insane hits like Gang featuring Little Tekka and Destroy Lonely, Murder Music featuring Destroy Lonely, and Hang Fire, with Murder Music ending up being on Ken's next project as well, due to the fans hype around it. These Lost Files overall just shows how strong of a fan base Ken really has. Even though he believes these songs are just throwaways, they will always fuck with the songs he puts out. Lost Files 3 would once again bring in more streams than his previous Lost Files, which made it a major success. This project would hold down the fans until his sophomore studio album would release. Until then, he would just do some more lying performing and once again some more lying yeah i didn't really include all the lies he said in this video because that would just be so fucking long honestly i can make a whole ass video on that honestly if you want me to make a video on that let me know in the comments section below i would totally do it under the new alias x-men which would be inspired by reading the x-men comics as a kid would be a new persona that ken would acquire before the release of his upcoming album as we saw in lost files 3 he even used the logo from the x-men as a new symbol for his persona in fact the album was supposed to be titled X-Man, but I assume he had to change it due to marketing and licensing issues. On July 23rd, 2022 would be the official release date for his second album, X. It would have the entire Opium roster on it, with two Destroy Lonely features, a Homicide Gang feature, and being executive produced by Cardi. In my opinion, the album wasn't too bad. It was above average, although many fans would say it's mid due to the rage sound being a little overdone. Intro, MDMA featuring Destroy Lonely, and Freestyle 2 would end up being the highlights of this album for many. Goomba wanted this album to be a rage album because he wanted people to get hyped when turning the shit on. He picked the hardest songs off Project X, which would lead him to create more within that genre. Overall, I believe it was a little overhated. There are many songs to go back to with this one. Ken would also end up being featured on his label mate Destroy Lonely upcoming project No Stylus with the song Veteran, with the recent collabs having people getting hyped for a possible Opium Twin collab tape. Ken would end up beefing with another rapper earlier this month named Ken Ken. Their beef would start with fans tagging Ken in Ken's comments of the Insta post for the Butterfly music video. Ken did not take it too lightly, saying not to tag other rappers who bite his shit. This could be due to the snippet Ken Ken posted around that time, which did sound similar to the song. Cause I get high and shit I run my money up higher than a bitch I might go fuck up her friend Ayy, nigga this shit just music Ken Ken would respond to Ken on an Instagram live in which he would do another live where Ken would say in the comments where your studio at and then on another live explain that he doesn't care who disses him. A year later, in August of 2022, another rapper of the name of Summers would post the most streamed rappers of the underground on his Insta story. At around the same time, Ken would post many tweets sounding to subliminally diss someone. However, Summers would post on his story Ken DMing him to tell Ken to shoot the fade, resulting in what people thought of RR which was Ken's group versus Opium Battle. Ken would also release a track named Post Your Axe Gang, referencing one of Ken's tweets. Now in general, I think this beef should just ease down at the end of the day. We want to see both of them up, possibly even collab. The whole biting shit was low-key kind of childish. To close off the year of 2022, Ken would release the deluxe to his ex titled Extended on Halloween. It would have his highly anticipated snippet, Freestyle 3, on the project. It added 5 new tracks to X alongside Freestyle 3 with Shoot and Fashion Habits. It honestly was amazing with a whole new side to Ken on these 5 new tracks. Fans begin to see a new era ahead of them with his new deep voice he's been adding to his mixing, and we're all here for it. Recently, Ken has dropped Lost Files 4, although he said those songs got leaked. Ken thought we were really that dumb. Suicidal followed that new sound Ken was experimenting with. It did end up becoming the best track on Lost Files 4 in my opinion. His latest release is I Need You, which released this Valentine's Day. Now, what drives Ken to pursue all this music is that he wants people to listen to him when they're down to get turned up and happy. He never wants to lower people's day, even when they're feeling down, which is why he adapted that whole X branding to be high on life. Now, being part of Opium, he gets to help spread his creativity to the world. With his next project and a possible collab tape with Lone on the way, the future is bright for the young star. Now being taught a very important lesson by Cardi, bro will always be focused on his craft. Like, if I'm down or some shit, he might just be like, bro, just pull up, put your phone down, bro. We always see him smiling so he can never bring negativity to the world. Although he has been hiding it due to the memes, he does still bring in positivity. Kenyatta has a bright future ahead of him, currently sitting at 4.2 million monthly listeners and only room to improve. At the end of the day, Ken Carson wants to live a life of the high of partying and happiness all the time. He has the youth following him by his side, by providing a message to the youth along with his fans. In which, I think it's best for him to say it. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do something. Try anything and everything you want to do because life is short or long. So like, bro, 
do everything you want to fucking do. Knock that shit out, bro. See if you like it. If you do, keep doing it. If it's something... If it's something beneficial, you keep doing it, bro.